Hey everybody, welcome to Garage Talk. I'm your host, David, and this is a show where we talk to and about independent filmmaking and the people who make it. I am super excited because we have a film we're going to be talking about today that I absolutely love. It is so much fun. It is so cool. It is called Pet Rock of Eternity, and it is directed, written, filmed, and edited by Thor Slaughter. Man, I feel like I'm at like a... Like a wrestling event. You're coming in with your own. Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed up with the wrong energy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. This and is it's... room 1A, right? We're a tag team, right? We're... right this right. is this is for the championship? <laughs> please do not. Please don't figure for me. The Garage Talk Championship. <laughs> and the too. film stars Manny Lopez. Thank hello. you for coming. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hello, hello. Um, so we kind of always start these off by, uh, I start by asking the director, but Manny, feel free to jump in as well. Can you tell me a little bit about what this story is? Yeah, totally. Uh, this story to me is a lot of things, oddly personal and impersonal at the same time. Um, there's a lot of sort of artistic things I wanted to do with this. Um, and then as I started delving into it, uh, I realized coming out of the pandemic, a lot of people had these little like obsessions a lot of people had these really private little weird quirky things they got into you know what i mean everyone during the pandemic got really into some weird thing like i'm baking bread today you know oh i'm making my own cheese now or like i'm really into transformers you know and one of those things for me was movies and really delving as deeply as humanly possible into movies and my uh my fiance laura love my life was like are you okay? Like, are you depressed? Like, is something wrong? And I'll be like, no, I just love sitting here watching three movies a night. It's like my favorite thing in the world. And she was so concerned that like, there was some like cataclysmic shift coming in my life. You know what I mean? And so I sort of like this, this idea coming out of COVID of, of people having these little pet obsessions and then from there, it was, I guess, a lot of different things were happening. It was, you, you start getting, you know, I just turned 30 this year. And you start getting a little bit older. You start seeing where your friends went. You, you really start seeing where people, like, veer off in terms of their relationships and where your friendships are. And especially, like, male friendships, to me, is really interesting uh, in this day and age. Because the way you compare yourself to others, the way you compare your successes to others, you start, by the time you're 30, you really have chosen what's important to you, or you're realizing you spent a lot of years spinning your wheels. And, and so exploring all those as like the subtext of wanting to do something outdoors that was pretty. I wanted to do something with actors where I could really work with some drama. And I, I, when we talked about it, when I sort of pitched you on it, it was almost like in my head, it was like a play. Yeah. Is how I wanted to structure it, especially with the writing. Like I wanted to base it around three intense conversations. Uh, you with a rock. Yes. You with your friend. My rock, my precious. And then you with your old friend and the rock. So it was like, I just developed all these different little devices. And then suddenly before I knew it, I was like writing. And then it just got so much longer because there was just a lot of like me coming out of it. In the, and so, yeah, I think, I think that's what it's about. And it's also about pet rock. Yes. Pet okay. rocks. <laughs> it's also about pet rock. That's also awesome. about this guy with, with, a, with a pet rock. So you, so this was a fully scripted piece. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. was there an improv that happened, or did you guys pretty much stay with the script? We pretty much stayed with yeah. the script. It was, like, it was one of my first projects, oh, cool. like, with having so many lines mm -hmm. and having a lead role. And so I'm just like, I'm just going to play it safe. I'm just going to play these lines as best of, of my ability that I can. Yeah. And so, yeah. And we just really did a little bit, I, I'd say, of... We tweaked words as yeah. you said them. Yeah, we found yeah. about where to dig in. We got rid of some stuff. Yeah, definitely. and then there was a lot of like following you two around with the camera, just sort of 
it, it me just like me yelling things at you to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like pretty try good. saying this. Like <laughs> Stephen, the 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 other co actor uh, who couldn't be here today. He, he I, I was it was a lot of we I, I came up with a lot of stuff for him to say sort of on the spot as we were like digging into it because it was a lot of fun. The a lot of the film sort of happens in the woods. Yeah. Um, on this really beautiful like scenic little bridge. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, with the rock so a lot of it was once we got there it was sort of fun to dig in and and to bring you know these ideas to life yeah so yeah so okay that's awesome so like so maybe your character mm -hmm. is this person that kind of is is at this place in their life maybe like they've become comfortable mm -hmm. right and and you've you've found this amazing pet rock in the yeah. middle of the woods mm -hmm. right and then a friend of yours comes back from out of town and um, it's interesting you say that because um, there's that conversation between between Steve and your and your character, where you guys are talking about kind of how your lives have taken these different paths. And I thought that was really interesting um, because I I grew up in kind of a small rural rural area of Ohio, and then I moved uh, kind of a couple different places. And going home is always an interesting thing because I kind of moved away from what I did in my younger days. Um, and then I go home and I see my friends and they're kind of in that same spot in that same area and doing the same thing. And so it's an interesting idea that kind of runs throughout the story. Mm -hmm. Um, was that, was what, what was that like kind of tapping into that kind of a character? Oh, pretty easy. I mean, I mean, I feel like we all have those friends where they're like, every, they, they, they've grown up, they have their families or they, they've grown up, have their families and are like working these fantastic jobs. Uh, but then you have, you kind of can't help but compare yourself to that, yeah. and be like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm just. Uh, it, it, it was very easy to tap into that because very much I am very much someone that wants to pursue the like visual art thing, and I'm still doing it pretty strong, and I, 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 I could relate to the character very easily. I, I am very much someone that is, uh, still chasing some creative work or, or I am creating creative work yeah. for for my friends to partake in and so it is it is relatable but not to such an extent like not to the extremist extent got it got it but it it was it was it was fun to just explore that character and yeah. like, oh okay cool yeah let's just pull these emotions out and out of this bag and how, how much did you feel like you were tapping into sort of your own feelings and thoughts in that character and where they were in their lives um probably like i mean maybe i feel like i am very much very similar to the character and where like at least i feel where i am uh i am still like, I feel like I have all these lofty, like, impossible ideas and dreams yeah. that I'm, I'm, I'm still pursuing. Uh, so it's, it's very easy for me to tap in. I want to say maybe like 95%. <laughs> awesome. I wouldn't talk to a pet rock that, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> very cool. Well, and, and Thor, how much of the kind of, so it sounds like there's a fair amount of, of your voice in, in those, in that dialogue in terms of some of the things you're thinking about and feeling as you're kind of moving into this new phase of being a grown up in in the dystopian right. world we live in today uh was that was that um as as you were directing nanny was that an interesting kind of thing like did you guys have really close agreement and kind of coming in or did that shape and the character shift and shape as you guys were filming it from what you had originally written well um one thing that i definitely did very early on was approach you and steven and get you on board before I really wrote the dialogue, which was pretty important for me. Just because I'm a very new writer, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I wanted to imagine you sort of speaking it, but I also wanted both characters to be halves of what I sort of go through on a daily basis. And uh, just because I'm in the service industry, I'm a bartender, I run a bar, um, and you work in the service industry too. Mm -hmm. There's a kinship 
um, that I think we have that we can yeah. understand. Yes. And I picked you and Steven, I approached you because you're both people that are behind the camera or you're behind the pen, you're, beh you're, you're, you're creative people. And I knew that I, I really wanted to hit specific notes with this. And so I didn't have access to this like plethora of actors, but I knew I was like, well, if I can get my friends that I already know that are creative, I, I feel like they'll let me mold them a little bit. And it's funny because in the in, in the short, like we kept the name Manny because I just yeah. thought it'd be funny <laughs> if people thought you were actually talking to a pet rock. Uh, but we both work in the service industry, yeah. and I think there's uh, there's that relationship you have where it's like the amount of times where someone that used to be my friend that still is my friend, but someone, you know, you 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 grow apart, and then someone just shows up at your work, and you're just like, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then also that idea of, of people that, that create something from nothing, which I feel like your character creates something from nothing. And then uh, Harry Powell's character, who I will say that is uh, obviously a reference to Night of the Hunter. Nice. Everyone should go see that. <laughs> uh, one of the best movies ever. and was definitely a big influence on this. Uh, so that's a reference to, to that. But, uh, so Steven's character, Harry Powell, I wanted to sort of be like, you know, when you get to this age, you, you start looking around and you're like, well, I feel like I built this up from the ground for myself. And then you see people that are in these situations where they're working hard, but things have been given to them. And it's hard to separate sort of that jealousy. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of not like dislike or distaste, but it's a little bit of jealousy, you know, yeah. and you're like, oh, I'm starting to grow up in the world. And, and have I found my thing? What is my thing? And then you end up sort of going into what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel good. And especially now with like our phones, all we do is we get shown like what makes us happy. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. like Katie. Disney Plus, like reviving everything from my childhood. <laughs> like, the doctor that brought me into this world now has their own show on Disney Plus on it. Is rebooted. Uh, Adrian Brody plays the doctor that delivered me. <laughs> and they sell it to me. I'm the only one that could get it. Um, uh, that's awesome. But uh, I love that idea of like, it's just, it's, it's a little evil and like yeah. incestuous. Like yeah. baby Yoda is a little evil to me. Like I love baby Yoda, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's, there's something a little evil about baby Yoda. Cause it, it, it whispers in your ear it's and like it reminds you of right? like happy times, yeah. you know, better yeah. economies, gas prices were cheaper. <laughs> like, you know, it's just yeah. like, what if you took this to just its most logical conclusion, yeah. which for me is supernatural terror <laughs> i like it well so speaking of that before we get into anything else yeah. you did bring a, a clip from your film well yes it's not just quite a clip but tell us set, set this up for us and let us know what yeah we're so uh i made a little teaser because when you tell people you made a short film about a pet rock everyone thinks it's like really really jokey like yeah. like people think it's like my adam sandler movie <laughs> but it's like no this is my christine this is my exorcist like so it was really important to me to um i really wanted to as i love trailers like trailers are the funnest thing in the world like the amount of times the trailer has been better than the movie is astronomical yeah astronomical um, and so i really wanted to have fun making a trailer and and, and sort of delivering the tone because i love the juxtaposition of here's a pet rock but then here's the spooky strings and i feel like we're in the height of a24 movies that are these elevated yeah. horror movies and so i sort of yeah. wanted to like I sort of wanted to like get in a dig at A24 a little bit, you know what I mean? Like the lambs were possessed. The lighthouse was possessed. Now the rock is possessed. <laughs> cool, all right, well, let's check it out. Yeah. Very cool. How long have you been talking to this thing? Uh, about two years. Like every day for two years? Of course not. Look, we're almost here. It's a pet rock, Harry. <laughs> awesome! I I am so excited about this film, and I really like the clip as well. So, one of the things that I really think, to me, 
is really amazing about this project is a lot of the cinematography is just absolutely beautiful. I got tears. I got no, tears. it's beautiful. And I, and I have questions about it specifically, but like, uh, and I'll ask you in a, in a little bit, but like the intro to me um, has some like really strong themes. And then as the, it progresses out of the intro into kind of like the body of the story, um, there's a shift tonally in somat the mat or well not thematically but cinematography in terms of cinematography turn into porky pig there um and then it shifts even further in the third act of the film when they go to the forest were there inspirations that that you were kind of looking at as you were filming each of those sections and oh 100 uh, yeah so talk to me about that percent uh the good artists borrow the best ones steal baby right. uh, <laughs> No, no. Um, thank you so much for saying that. I love cinematography. It's it's the thing that I think makes me go back to movies again mm -hmm. and again and again. Because I think you can watch a movie that's shot pretty boring with just a ton of coverage. You can watch that, and if the performances are great, the story is good. It's it's good. But when you have a movie that you can just like watch, like a Renaissance painting, mm -hmm. that to me is like the best thing in the world. And one of the best things about being a low budget filmmaker, a no budget filmmaker in, uh, I mean, our, our character is a, a, a pet rock. <laughs> it doesn't get more no budget than that. Uh, but one of the, the things that we have is, is, is it's beautiful out here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. And I really gravitate towards film that have a really good sense of nature. Um, and I think it's one of those things that makes films feel classic and not just things that were shot in LA. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, um, like for example, um, I love the opening credits to Ran by Akira Kurosawa. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed with the way he uses nature. And also me just being someone that loves Japan. I love, love, love the way there's stuff in the foreground, midground, background, yeah. um, all nature oriented. And especially the opening of Ran is just beautiful on these sort of rolling hills and they're getting ready. They're hunting these boars and there's just this movement there's movement happening on the horses that they're riding and there's movement happening in the grass. And I just love, love, love that. And especially the scene in um, Rashomon where the main character is walking through the forest. It's like one of the most like, looking back at it, it's like ridiculously gratuitous because it's like 10 minutes of just like him every single angle in the yeah. forest, like finding ways to like shoot him through a tree going down, you know? Yeah. But I just loved this like, we're just taking time to observe the scenery. And I was really lucky to have a friend that had um, this beautiful property in Marcola that let us film there. And so I just really became obsessed with like watching films that really incorporated nature in it and some excitement. And then of course, like I'm a big um, obsessive fan over Gordon Willis, a cinematographer, yeah. you know, he did all the Godfathers, but I really like his stuff with uh, Alan Pakula. I had you guys watch Clute, mm -hmm. um, All the President's Men, yeah. The Parallax View, which is like one of my favorite movies ever because I just obsess over uh, the, the width of things. Mm -hmm. And especially in The Parallax View, there's characters that interact with their environment without the camera moving. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and especially Bill, I think Bill Butler, who did The Conversation, he did some stuff with Coppola, and he did um, Capricorn One which I really love just like that, like sort of seventies era film and especially ones that had this really big wide stuff. I just want to, I just want it as wide as possible yeah. because it's, it's, that's anti CGI to me. And it's funny cause I have no money for CGI and I have no talent or skill for CGI. So it's like, well, what's the, what's the now the low budget thing to do. And so to me, it's sort of funny that now the no budget thing to do is film a gigantic like forest <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. like it seems like that's what's really expensive for Hollywood to do but yeah. if you're just one person with a camera it's really easy for you to do okay. and so I just absolutely obsess over um another one was Deer Hunter I think the Deer Hunter oh, yeah. was like really big for me with this film because yeah. it, I mean obviously like Christopher Walken playing Russian roulette is a thing that most sticks in people's minds but like most of that film is like Robert De Niro in like rural Pennsylvania, yeah. like just going around forests and stuff. I would argue that there's the, the Russian roulette scene in Deer Hunter, there's some flavor of that in the scene where they're at the picnic bench drinking 
Not the speak, <sighs> drinking the beers, right? I'm gonna cry. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. this man is yeah. making me cry. I'm gonna cry in garage top. You might have to get a mop for garage for the garage, garage top. top. <laughs> garage mop. Well, especially, mop top. Mop top. <laughs> no, because especially in the in the deer hunter, right? There's this there's this in, intense exchange between the two actor or the two yeah, the two characters. And then the overhead of the of the gun. You know, moving yep. back and forth, and that that sort of mirrored a little bit with the beers, oh, right? Man. Yeah, thank yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, because yeah. especially a lot of deer hunters is, is old friends. One yeah. friend's a little deranged now, trying to check up on him. So I think it was like, I was like, if I can take the deer hunter and a John Carpenter movie yeah. and put a pet rock in, <laughs> <laughs> well, and even your camera angles get like that's the other thing. As I was watching it the first time, because I I didn't see the trailer before I watched it the first time. Right, right, right. So like I had I went into it like with no idea about what I was going to see, and and like the opening to it feels I don't I don't know how you feel about this person, and I mean it in the best way humanly possible. So he's very divisive, but like the intro to it felt sort of Wes Anderson to me. Like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> no, you 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 hit it, man, because. Uh... What's funny is, is is I'm always trying to start a YouTube show with my with my fiance Laura about uh, astrological signs and directors. Okay. Because I'm I'm convinced there's like this crazy crossover because I'm a Taurus and Wes Anderson's a Taurus. There you go. <laughs> and we both love that symmetrical yeah. framing right yeah. in the middle, and we both just love. It's so obnoxious. No, it's but beautiful. it's like it's 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 beautiful, right? Yeah. Like I think it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah, you you, so you got to learn yeah. when yeah. to you know yeah. remix yeah. it, like when to pull it back on the fader yeah. a little bit. But, but it's so but but the thing though that then like so it it has that feel to me. Uh, right up until, even even when when uh, Stephen is like, "Hey, man," and I'm wait like waiting in line, right, to talk with him. But when they shift over to sitting at the at the table talking, there's a shift tonally in like the uh, camera, the way the camera is working, and it has a much more like suspenseful. You know, we're on the outside, and then as things happen, the camera moves really like tighter and closer on their faces mm -hmm. and there's this sort of interesting angle thing that manny your character is kind of it's always kind of shot over at a little bit of a lower angle so yep. you feel a little smaller in yep. the frame yep oh dude he was he, he's just yep. hitting he, he read, <laughs> did he read my script notes <laughs> did he, yeah, or, or, uh, i'm probably just not as clever as i think so. no you're totally <laughs> clever visual literacy. I, I had to watch the, i had to watch the film like a lot of times so no it's good but no thank you i really appreciate that yeah so one of the things we did is we always made manny hunch uh -huh. Okay. I really always wanted Manny hunching. I wanted Stephen Harry Powell, Stephen's character Harry Powell, to always be like this. I wanted them to have a little bit of a dynamic. Um, and in the so when we first find Manny's character, he's working in a food cart, and I was really purposeful about wanting to look up at Manny when he's in the food mm -hmm. cart because okay. it's sort of his cage yeah. that is the thing that gives him comfort. And so he looks down on Harry Powell when they first interact. And you have the power because there's people in, in line before and after him. And then once you have to sort of talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, you sort of cower a little bit. And we really wanted you to cower and, and become pretty passive and dismissive until we start talking about The Rock, which was important for me because that's your passion. Yeah. So we finally opened it up. And I really wanted... You know, that big symmetrical framing of them both sitting on the table, Harry Powell sitting up, Manny shrinking. And then I love, again, like Gordon Willis uh, just does these absolutely beautiful, like floating head conversations where there's so much negative space. Mm -hmm. And so we put uh, Steven's character so that when we're looking at him, we see all the picnic tables with the light that coming over it, just sort of looking beautiful and serene and calm. And then when we turn to Manny, we put him right next to this just like industrial like storage container. Yeah. So every time we're looking at Manny, it's just sort of <laughs> ugly. It's just an it's ugly like, shot. Boom, boom. And then when you finally sort of give your soliloquy, which... I mean, you maybe did it in a take and a half, not even two takes. It didn't even take you two takes. You nailed it. Because to me, that's the heart of <laughs> the film is when you open up about your love for The Rock. And I knew that if that didn't work, if if people didn't believe that you truly had a, were, had a hold on you from this rock, then the movie doesn't make sense. It's just a joke. Yeah. And, 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 and it, yes, it's funny, but also like, you know, I wanted it to be serious. And so when we finally get you to open up, it's the first time that we sort of look up at Manny in that mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah. 
and we had um, Skyler, who's a good friend, and he was in a short film that I did before this. He sat with this really cheap like lighting panel that I think was like a, a, a an Amazon like a Chinese Amazon lighting panel that Steven had and I had him crank the light like one percent like I gave him all these like cues so we put the light so like Manny's here like you're here and then yeah. the light panel was like right here because it was the middle of the day yeah. and I had him slowly crank it up as he talked and then we put the little Tibetan Buddhist yeah. chimes underneath it. And I, I to sort of like illustrate that idea of like, because another thing is I was telling yeah. people, was I was like, this is E.T. to me. Like to me, like this is E.T. meets like Christine meets like the deer hunter. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> like, I know that's so like it, it no, asinine it was for like, it was amazing. You know, the bartender to be like, I'm making a short film. It's the deer hunter meets Christine. Meets the, <laughs> and there's a pet rock and it's for all time. And it's, you know, it's HP Lovecraft on steroids, but not nearly as racist. It's going to be good. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So Manny, you're, you're uh, now yeah. charged with playing that. Yes. Right. So you've got, you've got the deer hunter meets Christina meets HP Lovecraft. Coming yep. at you. Yep. With the and light right here. The light right here. <laughs> and it's all centered around a pet rock. And there's these huge... Uh, and again, I, I I mean this in the like the most like sincere, loving way possible. There's some tonal shifts that happen in this thing. And they're handled very, very well. And the reason I say that it's done well is because like, if I sit and I watch it, I go, oh, here's a shift here, here's a shift here, here's a shift here. But when I'm just watching the movie, like, I don't notice it until it's too late. Like, right now I'm knee deep in the deer hunter and I was just <laughs> in Bambi. What happened? <laughs> but, but like, one of the things, not only is the, the storytelling, the cinematography and the editing, by the way, mwah, oh, doing that, but... You love my little like, cheesy pushes? No, yeah, I, I, love, I love those, those pushes. I <laughs> love those pushes. Um, but as an actor, you're doing a good job of like taking us through the narrative story as well. So what was that process like? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was amazing because, I mean, the way that we did, the way that we got to that point was we would meet up at your house and we would just read the lines, like no emotion, just however many times we needed to. And then as we started to read more into, like we started to do the lines over and over, we would, we would get direction, you know, and, and, uh, just kind of taking notes and applying those. And just like when, when I was younger, I, I did a lot of like playing pretend mm -hmm. with, with my sisters and my cousins. And I'm just like, Oh, I'm just going to tap into that. Just play pretend and apply these emotions into these, into these spots. And it was it was amazingly fun and a great process. It wasn't stressful or anything. It was just, it was awesome. definitely. You gotta give yourself yeah. more credit. Than that, man. <laughs> he's, he's playing it. He's playing it modest. We, we ran that whole dialogue scene and we did it as many times as we could to get it as fast as humanly yeah. possible. Oh, yeah. and zero emotion. And we set a timer. Yeah, we set a timer. To get it through <laughs> as, and you guys just had to say it as fast as humanly possible. And I wanted you to just get faster and faster and uh -huh. faster and faster. Because I didn't want like any acting. Because we, you, you always need that like, the first pass of acting is always terrible. It's always like the fourth pass of acting. You know what I mean? When, when you bring something to it. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until you had gotten that whole speech down to like, the whole conversation we got down to like two minutes. Yeah. And then when we opened it up to like three minutes, like you hit me so hard <laughs> that like I can watch you give that little speech. Like I just watch it for fun. I hope you know that. Nice. I watch it for fun. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> just, like just to be in the back of cold fire, like just like the last thing we're filming, like, all right, Manny, sink the film. Like, all right, let's do it. Like I need you to, to hold the love and the possession in your heart and your face is going to glow and you're going to beam like you're e Drew Barrymore and E.T. <laughs> so yeah, you, he crushed it. He crushed That's it. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Well, so we are getting low on time, but, um, one of the questions I always like to ask, and this is this is for both of you, um, don't feel like it's to one or the other, but do you have advice for people who want to to do what you guys have done, which is make a movie? Do you have any advice to get started and how to take that first step or anything like that? I mean, I would say just get together and start it, and no matter what the outcome is, just finish it. Start your project and just finish it, because yeah. then that gives you the confidence to do it again. You know, you're like, oh, I finally did that. Yeah. 
well, let's do it again. And then you could do whatever, you know, you could review over what you did last time and then make it better the next time. But just, you know, find some like-minded folks and go up, just press on with it. Just do it. It's fun. It's not to impress anyone. It's just to get your emotions and uh, artistic creativity out. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would say no matter what, no matter how dumb you think it is, just finish the project. <laughs> yeah. Just finish it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. percent, hundred percent. And I would say too, like specificity is your best friend. Like, uh, yeah, I think everyone gets worried with their first project about doing something like that means everything and you'll never get the specifics if you're so obsessed with something that means everything, like start with something so specific and then you just start putting layers and layers on top of it. And then you realize like what the thing was about in mm -hmm. the first place. Mm -hmm. And, and again, like what you said, just, you just got to go out there and you got to whoop ass and do it. Yeah. This, like the fact that we came out with this is a dream come true for me. Cause I started having no film experience eight months ago. And for my birthday, I told myself I was going to make a short film. I had no money. I made it on my phone. And you did some animation for it. I called yeah. in all my favors and we made this little short on my phone. And from the showing that we did at the Metro, the Broadway Metro in Eugene, I got s enough commercial opportunities from that to m realize my dream of getting a real cinema camera, getting real equipment and, and teaching myself these skills. So it happened for me all in eight months. And if nothing ever happens in my life again, I know that I made something that I was incredibly proud of. And so you just never know, like you are the tool is like what I tell people. Like you don't need to buy the tool, you are the tool. Like be the person that is, is there doing the thing. Be the person that's off the wall. Like be the person that's digging a little bit deeper than everybody else. Cause at the end of the day, like you're the tool, not the yeah. tool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very, very cool. Awesome. So, okay. Uh, we'll put the thing down in the thing, but where can we find this movie? You can find it on YouTube. Uh, you can just YouTube Pet Rock of Eternity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty unique name. It's the only thing that really comes up. Uh, Cow Dog Productions, named after my dog who just passed Spot. I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Long live Spot, Cow Dog. Spot. Uh, and so <laughs> all my creative things will be under Cow Dog. My personal Instagram is Thor Sucks, where I post a lot of... <laughs> movie <laughs> nonsense based on a true story i do suck I'm not I'm not that cool it's not at all very cool so. awesome right. manny where can we find you uh i am on instagram under avocado man okay i'm also on Bandcamp under adventure tunes cool cool so those are my those awesome. are my things yeah we'll put we'll put the information down in the linky thing he's down at the bottom but thank you guys so much uh it's i didn't even uh, like just okay so i didn't even know that you just started like eight months ago that's so unfair and makes me so mad. I'm going to be honest because oh. it's a beautiful, I, it's a beautiful film. It's very well done. It's very fun. It's very entertaining. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that I want to talk about, but can't talk about because it spoils the film if I talk about. So once we stop Patreon recording, Patreon episode. That's right. Rush talk Patreon episode. What y'all know about that? Subscribe now. Pay five ninety nine to unlock the spoiler talk. <laughs> Well, thank you guys all so much. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you all thank for joining you. us out on the internet. Yeah. Guys, have a great evening and go make some movies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>